Mr. Bradley, I believe I'll be your caddy today. You got Bradley on the back? Oh yeah, it's got Bradley on the back, bro. Oh, what do you think this is? You guys are official. We're very official. All right, welcome to the second episode of Side Gig. I am so excited. We are here in, what is it, Stratham, New Hampshire? Yeah. Stratham, New Hampshire. Obviously, Keegan Bradley over my right shoulder. Major champion, Ryder Cupper, won a designated event. Is that a thing that we say now, like designated yeah. event winner? I think yeah. it is. He's like, yeah, it is. Hell yeah, it is. Uh, we are at the Golf Club of New England. This course is as mint as it gets. Uh, we're gonna play some golf today. Keegan's gonna play nine holes. I'm gonna caddy. That's what we do here at Side Gig. I think you're gonna play the back tees. Mm -hmm. They're like a million yards. A million. A million. Uh, you just shot 23 under to win a tournament, so I'm expecting the over under today is two and a half under okay. on the back nine. All right. uh, as I told you off camera, uh, n nobody that I've caddied for has made a bogey yet, so. We're gonna have a bogey today. If you bogey the first hole, I think I'm gonna walk <laughs> off the course. But yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna get really, really golf nerdy as we always do on side gig. And we're gonna chat about life and, and everything else while we do it, so let's have some fun. The trendy putter. The trendy putter originated with me, I hate to say it. Oh, I know, bucket. I know bucket. they want it. I know they want to say it was Ricky Fowler, but. Yeah. How you had that thing in the bag for a while? Yeah, I, I had it, um, I started using it in the fall last year. This is back when I was putting so bad. Yeah. And and, and, and actually, I was playing with MJ, and he's the, who's most, that? He's the most unbelievable putter. Wait, who's MJ? Michael Jordan. Okay, okay. And I'm watching him, and he's, his, his hands are so big, he putts cross-handed like, like I'm doing here. Yeah. And it just was so simple, and he was making, I was like, I'm gonna, Give that a go. Yeah. And I found this in my garage, and this was when I was going from the belly putter. Yeah. So like I was try at the time I was Wait, trying how to. How long ago is this? This putter's probably from 2014 or this 15. This putter's that old? Yeah. The trendy one? Yeah. It's just coming back in style. It's coming back. It's like Von Dutch hats. <laughs> it's just like coming back. Let's get things going. This looks like driver. This is a driver as hard as I can hit Long it. Long hole. We're gonna use a laser today. We're gonna pretend it's the PGA Championship. You're a big fan of the PGA Championship. I sure am. 320, 324 to the lip of that bunker up the hill. I think this, I was with my coach out here this week. This hole, doesn't this drive remind you a little bit of eight at Augusta? Like with the yeah, short with going, left and going and then, up. Yeah. yeah, I see that. So your line is like kind of over the, like just right of the left tee marker? Yeah, it's that big tree and in between the bunker. Okay. So, we're playing USGA rules, uh, ball down. Okay. Actually, it's pretty wet. Yeah. We'll, we'll go what, lift clean place. Is this? is this the US Open? <laughs> do, I, do I have to I like putt? I know you're not a big USGA guy. No, I'm not. So it's, a, it's the PGA Championship, so it's yeah. lift clean in place. Yeah, beauty. Really nice. Good start. Got me walking on my, on my week off. This is. Yeah, it's a. Uh, watch tour pros don't like to walk. Oh, watch tour pros don't like to walk. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm obviously leaving for the British Open tomorrow and I'm hearing all sorts of horror stories of. Travel. Just like losing bags. And, yeah. You find commercial over there? Yeah. Wow, man of the people. I'm a man of the people. We got man. a NetJets towel, but we're fine commercial <laughs> over there. I don't have a big enough ball bag to fly over there private. That's a little, uh, that's yeah, a little far. That's fair. I'm leaving tomorrow night. I'll get in. Sunday, and then I'm I'm just all I'm just gonna go do a little work with Phil Kenyon, mm -hmm. putt a little bit, and then I normally take that day off just because I'm so jet lagged. Yeah. So how does he do that? Do you get something like a group chat? Does he like? Yeah, like you text him. I always I always try to text him early in the week and get my times in. Yeah. I do. I try to do an hour a day with him. Every I, day, every, like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. If if I'm feeling good and an everything. An hour a day. That's a lot. Yeah. Well, what happens? Because my thing is, and obviously I'm not a professional golfer. And this might be one of the reasons why, but like I'll hit like four putts good, and I'm like, what? Do, like, what am I gonna just keep doing this? Well, so what I have to do is a little different than what you have to okay, do. Okay, I gotta enough. play against friggin' Roy McIlroy. Mm -hmm. who, you're playing against the, the playing against the, accountants. Yeah, yeah. Like I, we're he's big at aim point guy. Uh huh. You're always working on aim point. All right, if Oof. I'm gonna make no bogeys, this is gonna be. This is a test. This is. I think we got like two. Twenty in. Tell me, two fifty three is not accurate. No, it can't be. Please no. Give me that thing. By the way, you're shooting it 10 yards behind the ball, number you one. 10 yards? It's 250, you got you got that kind of touch? Give me, give me that thing. No. It might be. 251? Give me that. We're gonna test you out right out of the chute. 
Yeah, I think it is actually. I think it's 251 and you think it's a par it's up, five? It's up to 261. It's now it's now it's a par five. Yeah, now it's a we par five. We just made it a par five. It, it's gotta be, be a par five. It better be a par five. Par is a social construct, it so is. we're still making four. We're gonna make four. So got two I th I said 261 up, um with the up. A little bit of help off the right. Yeah, I think I'm gonna hold this a little bit. It's right on it. Is that enough? I think it is. I smoked it. Good swing. Oh, I saw it bounce. It might, there's a bunker up there. I'm not why, sure if it... So you said that the, the three wood goes like 265 off the ground. Why not Why not three wood there? Well, because a little downwind. I, I think the three wood, the three wood goes about low 70s. Okay. So I hit my hybrid 250. Yeah. So I just thought in my in my head that would be such a little three wood. I'd rather hit a harder hybrid. Right. And also I feel like on these tough courses, people don't realize maybe is like more often than not, especially the courses you play in the greens, long is pretty much dead. Yeah. Like almost everywhere. I saw it bounce. I think it hit the lip of that bunker. So I noticed you went like quick there. You like didn't want to like chat about the line. You're like, I got this. Is that something you do like when you have a feeling you just want to go? Yes, especially if I have a wind that I like. Like I felt that wind helping, which I knew I needed. Yeah. What's your caddy's name again? Scotty Vale. And how long have you guys been working together? A couple years. We my old caddy got hurt and he caddied for me. We had a good stretch there. Oh and then, wow! You went with the hotter wife. No, but then I went. We went back. Okay. And then he he went and caddied for another player and Scotty and I got back together and it's been great. He left you for another player? He did. He broke up with you? He did. Dare I ask who the player it was? was? It was heartbreaking, honestly. Wait, was it, we talking about Pepsi? No. Oh. Yeah, this hit the, this hit, oh, it was short. Horrible caddying again. I, t I, I, the first question I asked is why didn't you hit three wood? Oh my God, and I'm, now I'm short-sided. Greens are pretty soft because of the rain last night, but I short-sided, so I got to land this and I see it's going to break a little this way, so I got to land this over in here. Clumpy sand, how does it, you, don't, you won't see this kind of sand on tour much. No, you won't. It poured last night, so. But we actually, on tour, we like a wetter sand. Spin it easier? So I feel like I can, I can really clip this and. Is it always 58 out of the bunker? Always. I'd Rolling give, like crazy. I'd give that a C minus, probably. It just, I'm surprised at how far it rolled out. I got you hit it a little fat? I got it a little chunky. I try, now that I've been doing aim point, I, I try not to let my eyes tell me anything. It, I'm telling you, in, in 10 years, when these younger kids all get out, that no one will be reading greens. Zero. And that doesn't elicit any emotion in you? What's the, what's the difference? Uh, it's just like golf is about... Bending down? Is that what it is? It's just been one of those things that's been part of the game forever. I do. I, I don't adjust my arm. Some guys calibrate their arm to distances, but I sort of feel it. Just outside right edge. Still got it. Walked it in. We're moving. It was Birdie. Was it a par four? It's I a par five. Par no, it's par four. <laughs> well, if it is a par four, then I still haven't made a bogey. So got it. every tournament I show up to, I worry if I've lost it or not. I've got to go through every process again. I got to, I'm a mess. We all are. We all are. I would go, I would go with for this. All right. It might not even be driver. The flag is 312. Down to what? 298. I'll give it a smash. I feel like it's gotta be dry because long is just that tee box, right? Yeah, that's just, that's fairway. Okay, so let's go with the driver, right? Yeah, definitely. Right at her? Right at it, but like in a, like you said, like if we were playing a tournament, I'd probably be aiming for that uh, left edge of the green. Just to give you some room with that tree. And then if I, if it does push, if I do hit it a little to the right, then I'm perfect. Your, your no bogey thing. What do you mean? I got to retake. Backed up on that one a little? It's just a bad shot. Sometimes you fucking. Sometimes it just fucking happens. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I should have done the first time. That's all right over there? Yeah. All right. We'll make five. Could make six, and then it would still be no bogeys. <laughs> so you've gotten rid of the, the like pump fake you used to do. To be honest with you, I have like crazy bad OCD. Uh huh. And I don't, I haven't really talked about it much. But in, like, in other parts of your life as well? Yeah. Yeah. And like, if people that sort of have OCD with stressful situations, it pops up. Yeah. So I worked really hard to, to sort of get that out, but it can pop up. Like I, you know, it's something that I work on, but. How do you manage it? I mean, I do a lot of like breathing exercises and, yeah. and it's, it's something that I've, I've have to work through like all the time. Mm -hmm. 
Is there like but, medication for that? No, I don't take any medication, yeah. but it's um, it's part of my what I have to deal with. Yeah. When my routine is at its best is when I play my best. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you're playing really bad, yeah. it seems so much harder. Right. When you're having a week like Hartford, it's like you get to the you get to your ball and it's a perfect nine iron. Yeah. You know, just things kind of go your way. Or like you were just talking about there, you, you're you're picking a smart target there, and yeah. you were saying, I push it a little. It's like on weeks that you win. You hit the lucky pushes or totally. the lucky pulls where you're 100%. aimed 30 feet right, but you pull it and it goes to six feet. 100%. And the, and the broadcast is saying, what a shot. And you're like, oh, yeah. pulled it a lot. But my my first win at the Byron Nelson, the 18th hole is this dog leg left. It's water all up, the, all up the left. Really tough hole. And I get up there and I hit a pull hook in the middle of the lake. I okay. stopped watching it. And there's like these waterfalls. Yeah. It hit the middle of the rocks in the waterfall and went left of the lake. No way. And I hit it on the green in my par. Was there anything like that when you won uh, the PGA? I got off to a horrible start. I was three over through five. And I just like played really solid the rest of the way. I mm -hmm. can't think of anything that was like a lucky or bad yeah. or break, but I'm sure there was. Life, life changed overnight with that win, huh? It, PGA? it did, man. That was kind of just when like social, it was social media was coming around. So like, I feel like before they didn't have a way to quantify like how much your life changed. Mm -hmm. But I feel like now in the social media era, you like open up your phone and you realize yeah. immediately. So I, before the PGA, I had won the Byron Nelson, but I still was like, nobody knew who I was. Yeah. And I won the PGA and I remember I went back, I was living in Jupiter. My buddies and I, we went to this sushi place in Jupiter called Two Bazaar. Mm -hmm. And I walked into the restaurant and everyone, I could tell every first time in my life. All looking at you. Everyone recognized me and they're like, like doing this. Yeah. And it was like that moment, everything was different. Yeah. Like it was like, this is like, people know who I am now. And it was really fun yeah. at the time, you know, with, I was with all my buddies and totally. we were having a blast. It was just a moment that you can point to that was, like you said, a life changing. It's kind of a tricky one with this, with this ridge. Yeah, see, like, it, this is a perfect example of like, when you're out playing a tournament, like how stupid that first shot is. And, and obviously wasn't trying to hit it there. You get, when in a tournament you get here and you're, and you're like, thinking, look how like, much why the is. hell did I just do that? When, Cause now I have a tough chip. Yeah. You know, instead of chipping this on to maybe 10 feet and trying to make birdie, I'm, I'm struggling to make to make bogey. So you so. think that that was the wrong decision or just a bad shot? It was just a bad shot. Like I hear announcers all the time, like they'll hit that shot and they'll go, how stupid was that? He's yeah. aiming at the flag and push. It's like, well, I just made a horrible swing, right. you know? I think I'm gonna bump it into this. Really? I'm, I'm gonna hit a 58 and try to get it in here and let it trickle down. You don't like, you, you prefer that over like kind of la trying to land it like 12 feet short with some spin? It could, you know what? Because no, the greens are so soft. All right, I'm gonna do this. this, is, now, this now this is your fault. Oh, see, that's not this how this thing. works. Like you, you caddies, we have a we have a thought in our head. I feel like down downhill lie is gonna put some left to right spin on it naturally. I had my first instinct. I had, and now you've switched it. So oh. I'm gonna go with yours. I was just asking a question. So yeah, now with with your shot, I'm gonna try to land it. I got a little spot. It's hard for me to tell, but it's about 12 feet left. Yeah, it's gonna spin right. Big bounce. You want it over? No, I like that. All right, now I'm gonna make that. Well, although I've broken the part. It's okay, life goes on. So like with Scotty, if Scotty had it, like what, would you be mad at him if he like asked that question? No, I, I, he'll tell you I never get mad at my caddies for anything. Yeah. Because I feel it's like- your decision at the end of the day. It's my decision and I feel like if I get mad at them, it impairs their judgment for the next time. Right, because like, they're gonna be hesitant to say something. There's one person that wants me to play my best more than anybody in the world and probably. It's him. And it's him, because this is his job. Yeah, it's directly so, linked. So again, I'll come up here. It's like kind of a similar putt, maybe a little more break. It is, see, I feel this very, I got that a little straighter, honestly. Dead straight. Nice, good save. Okay, we're out of here with a bogey. Okay. What was the process like of getting your own uh, logo? Uh, well, they actually, Jordan did this one. When you're with Jordan, you pick a number. So I picked 13. So they have my name Ke with Keegan Bradley and then my wife Jillian here. And then Logan here, it's my oldest son. We haven't put Cooper in there yet. Cooper, man. Tough look for Cooper. Tough look for Cooper. Coop's gotta get a logo, dude. You gotta get one. <laughs> Isn't this amazing that this is out here in New Hampshire? Yeah. Why are you so surprised though? Is New Hampshire not like a golf? Like you not just don't really. think of it that way? I mean, New Hampshire and Vermont aren't really, you, you don't really think of 
golf when you think of those states. Because the season's so short? Season's so short, and like they don't build championship courses right. like this, you know? Because you like to pull the, your own and take the thing and off and all don't that? Don't touch the clubs. Okay. <laughs> Just a question. Do you want to flirt with that bunker or left of it? You gotta, I kind of, I'm gonna hit a little cut off this tee. Okay. I'm gonna, anywhere on that bunker I think is okay because there's a lot more room left than, or to the right than it looks. Okay. So I'll start this at the left edge of this bunker and try to cut it back. Oh my goodness, dude. Might be all right. Be okay. I have to get lucky. All right, I'm just gonna chip this out. So is this what the people want to see? Me yeah. making bogeys and chipping out? This is going to be the clip. Perfect. It's going to be our promo. Chip out. Oh. How good is that? God, is that pure. How good is that? Good is that? These guys are good. <laughs> is there any world in which this becomes primary home base? Yeah, if I didn't play the tour, I would live up here. Yeah, but you're playing the tour. Yeah. I mean, like, it's just like for any job, like, I got to live where It gives you the work. best opportunity. Yeah. yeah. In Florida... Florida is the best, like the Grove and Bears Club, they're the best places to practice, I think, in the in the world. What we got there, Pards? I saw 126 says flat. Okay. You told me on the range that uh, yeah. that 52 goes 128. It does, but I'm a little bit worried about the spin because of how soft it is. You might want a little chippy pitching wedge? Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit a little chippy pitching wedge. See, this is interesting for people at home. It's like, it's 126, he hits it 128. You would think it's just a no-brainer but they're thinking about how it's gonna land. They're thinking about how it's gonna perform once it's on the ground. It's a, it's a different level. Yeah, I hit this club about 145 yards, so I- So you gotta take 17, 18 off it. So I, I do my swings and my yardages based off like parts of my body, like a shoulder, shoulder with this goes 128 yards. I think of chest, chest goes, this goes 126, so. So it's a chest, chest? This is, but this is a really awkward number. Like I was telling you at Hartford where you get to like perfect numbers. This is not one. Like if, if it was, up there, I'd hit 52, be perfect, or back there. So this is actually a, a, an awkward number for me, but this is why we practice it. It's a little thin, go! Thin to wind, kick forward. Go! Well, a little short. All right, we can make that. Not bad. So uh, I got a question for you. If you could have one shot back in your career, what would it be? I actually had one this year that I think about all the time at Torrey Pines. I finished second to Max Homa. I was cranking in that final round and... That's cranking means like playing well. Yeah, playing well. It's an and interesting one. I had made the cut like on the a number or one or two or whatever. And I shot, I actually teed off on 10 on Saturday and shot four or five under, which around there is you make a big move. Really good, yeah. And then I, I went out there on Sunday, my last shot before I went to go to the first team, my driver broke. No way. Scotty had to rush down to my locker, so I have a backup. And you're, as an anxious person, that's a worst This nightmare. is not good. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I hit a couple on the range, and I get to the first tee, and I didn't miss a shot all day. And I got to, I birdied 17 to get to within one. And Not an easy hole. No. And then I hit a perfect drive off 18. So now I'm, I'm in the fair. I'm ahead of Max in the round which is great for the position you I'm wanna, in. You wanna post the number and make him look at it. And I get to my ball and it's in the middle of the fairway and I was on this little downhill lie, like a little hump in the fairway. Mm -hmm. And I think I had like two, two 12-ish so holes. you gotta go for it. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Which would have been a perfect five iron, but it was like a little bit of a weird lie and it was colder, so I wanted to cut a four iron in there. Yeah. And I just, I didn't cut it and I hit it in the downslope of the bunker. And I, Max is an amazing player, but I would have loved to have just hit that in the middle of the green. If I make three, who knows? But you made five? I made five. So that's, that's, I thought you were going to say like you hit it in the wall. That was a, it's a, it's a little thing. He ended up making birdie, but you can't really. It's not the same, it's yeah. not the same thing. And yeah. what percent would you guess of guys are doing this now? A ton. Is it 50? I'd say it's more than 50. You think more than 50? I'd say more than 50 are doing some, a hybrid of both. Yeah. I would say 30 to 40% of them are doing like just strictly aim point. Like I'll go, I'll go tournaments without getting down. I feel like this is about a two. Break, break, do it. Give it yes, sir. It. That's what I like the to see, Keegan. That's a putter, man. That's a fucking fighter right that's there. That's what it's all Let's about. Go. Let's fucking You go. still want me to bend down and you're read those gonna, putts or no? Gonna fucking, you're not gonna embarrass you. We're in New England, <laughs> baby. This is home turf. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Great putt. Thanks.
I'm one of those golfers who like I'm you could probably tell I'm like Spieth where I like just never shut up when the ball is like like you're hitting and I'm like go go like from the bunker I love watching Spieth do that yeah. I love guys with that play with passion. you love Rom you love yeah Spieth, hell yeah. yeah I always tell my caddy my caddy knows this like if I am playing bad I have to get pissed for a second like I, I need that. You need to release it. That release, and then it can help. Yeah. Sometimes I'll do it on purpose. Like I don't even feel like getting mad. You'll just, you'll just do but it. But I'll just be like, I'll give myself a little talking to. Yeah. And it can snap me out of whatever. Right. So what are we looking at here? Is that bunker carryable? Yeah. So I'm going just either over that or just left of it. Okay. Let's see roast can, one. See if I can hit a decent drive here. Yeah, 280 to the lip, so no problem. Yeah. Good one. I like that one. I think that's pretty optimized. That's like 22, perfect. Yeah, that, that I love that flight. I really want it to go straight. I'm not looking for it to curve. Yeah. Well, it's hard to curve with driver, right? Yeah. Like, who's the player that right now impresses you the most when you play with them? You're like, fuck me, he's good. I mean, when I play with Justin Thomas, really, I, I, I'm just like so amazed at- Because of the variation. He has every shot. Yeah. Like, I, I don't really ever work my driver like up or down. Mm -hmm. Like he really looks at the shot that he has, whether it's a drive or an iron or a chip, yeah, and hits the shot that fits the fits the hole. Yeah. So you, your Ricky year, you kind of got the tail end of that last generation, mm -hmm. of like Ernie and like VJ. How are those guys different than the top players of today? It's weird because when I saw them, I think of them as like legends. Yeah. My my first PGA Tour event was was Sony at the time. I went to the putting green at Sony, and Ernie was on the putting green. And you're like, freaking out. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Like, I, this is the real And you deal. weren't a big, like, prospect. So you, had you no. ever played a PJ Tour event? No. Never played any, never played a major. You never got, like, an invite or no. anything like oh that? Oh, my God. No. Did you try to Monday into anything? Or? So I Mondayed, I, I Mondayed into a few Nationwide Web or Corn Ferry events. <laughs> you went through, whatever you it went was. through the whole thing yeah. there, the progression. Yeah. It was Nationwide when I was there. Yeah. And then at... Tory Pines, which is a few weeks later, I was on the putting green and I heard all this commotion. And I turned around and the big guy, Tiger Woods, yeah. was on the green. And that's when it was like, this is real. But yeah. What a beautiful hole. 96 down 95. Okay, so again, like this is normally a 58. I'm gonna hit 58, Not down to 95. That's what it says. So I gotta, this, I feel a little hurt. And it's you? definitely a little into now. Cause this has to land. I feel like if it lands short too, it's like a little bit of a ridge. I feel yeah. like it might rip. So 95, this would have to land like 98. So 98, I think is playing like low hundreds. But is that gonna rip? Is that gonna rip back? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to take some off, like take some spin off it, which I'll, I'll try to just feel like my arms are a little heavier. Mm -hmm. So I like this. Okay. Hit it nice. Is that gonna rip? Please don't rip. I think it needs to a little bit. Come on now. Okay, good shot. All right, that's nice. a you like B that? minus. B minus? B minus. Do you look at, because I think strokes gained would say that that's probably an above average shot. Yeah. Do you look at that stuff? I do look at that. Uh -huh. When I see that Look at shot, that beaver pelt. Can only take a divot like that in New England, that's, man. That's a fatty. I'm yeah. gonna toss you this. In New York, we can do that too, I Yeah, think. you can. Put some, res put some respect on New York. I'm a New York guy, Back St. Here. John's. Isn't that, is that in New York or is that in Jersey? It's in New York, dude. It's in Where, Queens. It's in Queens? I thought you were a New York guy. I'm not a New I mean, I'm a California guy who's been living in New York. It's in Queens. Nice, dude. That was good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, a little top. That was a pro move. So where, do you get, where did you guys practice? We played Beth Page Black. They'd, we'd start on that third hole, you know. The, and the play par the, three? Yeah, we'd play the inside. We wouldn't go over the road. They really made you guys feel like first class, like second class well, citizens Craig, out Craig there. Craig Courier, he always, he hates when I tell the story, but he was the superintendent and he took such good care of us. Yeah. We'd park at the maintenance and we'd play the inside. And then my senior year, was with one of my buddies, I was like, fuck it, man, we're going, we're going to go over the road. We're going to play them all. Like we imagine as a college kid, we couldn't go to 15, 16, 17, 18. That's, that's the money. So we go, we're doing it. Oh, you we're couldn't going. cross the road, couldn't right? Couldn't cross the road. Yeah. And we got in so much trouble. Like it, my coach was so mad. He should have been. We it was what a horrible thing. But it was it was worth it at the time. I yeah. like catting for a guy who's like full aim point. Sawhead has does nothing technology at all. Like does no it? track man really, no aim point or anything. So I had to fucking like read the putts. By the way, back to your question back there, he'd be one of the guys I'd say I've been pressed to watch play. He does around the greens. He's dirty. Dirty. Yeah. He he kind of plays like Bubba. A little, a little bit, bit. A little bit. Such a good kid. Really good kid. No! Oof. We're hooping. 
and we're really make those. We're oh hoopy match clubbing right now. Let's go, baby. <laughs> Come yes. on. Game if, point, bro. If you just didn't hit balls in the piss, we'd be like 400 yeah, far. I know. We're one under. We're, we're, one we're under. going we're now. Crazy. Tell me about the journey from St. John's to turning pro because like we said, you didn't get any sponsor invites. You didn't sign a couple hundred thousand dollar deal out of college. Tell me like how this all happened. So I raised some money with some family and friends. Did like you have to like write letters? I wrote this letter. Yeah. And I think I raised like 35 grand. Still have it? I paid them all back double. No, 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 no. I assumed that. Do you still have the letter? I wasn't asking I if you still have the my, 35 grand. I, I bet you my mom does. Yeah. I bet got to. And I, I'm so thankful for those people. And then, I mean, obviously I think back now, like that's amazing that they did that, but that wasn't enough to, and then I, I basically, and I did well and I ran out. So what were you playing? Like state opens and mini tours? Playing and... state opens, mini tours. And then I played the Hooters tour. And I worked at this course called Wheatley Hills and this, this group of guys like just, completely looked after me without them doc Morocco, i told i told the story on the on the foreplay podcast tell us again i was in houston texas this playing, is what year playing the hooter store this was 2009 so you're like 23 2009 yeah i had q school was due on thursday and i had been trying to make enough money to pay for it and i had gotten to this tournament and i couldn't pay how much was it 4500 i had i had like eleven hundred dollars in my bank account and i was in houston so i you weren't even close to having enough. no so i i had to work up the strength to call my buddy doc i only have eleven hundred dollars in my bank account and i need forty five hundred to pay for this q school or, or what am i doing you know I, I right because go. q school at that point it's like it's your lifeline yeah and you couldn't do another year of mondays and mini tours would be tough no and i he wired me he said no problem and wired me six thousand and so then it was like such a weight off my shoulders yeah and because I remember going, Doc, I called him, Doc, you, you gave me too much. He's like, no, no, just take it. And, and then that week in the Hooter store, I won that tournament, won 35 grand. And then from that moment to where I am now was a, was a rapid, like it just changed everything. Yeah, how, how long was it from then until fucking winning on the PGA Tour and winning the PGA? Not long. You did one year on the National It was tour? a year and a half to winning the PGA, I'd say. So you go in 18 Thanks months from it. having $1,100 in your bank account to being a major champion. Yeah. That's why guys don't give up. That's why guys keep at it for so long. For sure. Because they, they all feel, whether it's rational or not, that they can have that, that come up. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I dude, I never thought I wasn't going to. Uh, people all around me didn't think I was. Even, like, there was random people that would tell me that I wasn't going to make it. It's such a weird thing, I think, about now to tell a kid. Who, like, who? I remember Parents, people thinking... Friends, or, like... Like, like... When I worked at some of these clubs, they would ask me to want to do and they would like sort of laugh or make me feel like good. the assistant pro would be like yeah yeah and fucker be like well there's guys out there now at 23 that are doing it and i just like i just never had a backup plan i never thought in my mind like that this was it yeah. by the way thanks for this pin golf club in new england yeah they, 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 made, a they knew we were coming all right yeah that's a nasty pin this is 213 up 215 so this is a total no-go, right? Like you're just thinking middle of the green? I'm thinking middle of the green, but I like to draw it so I can be, like my first thought is I'm gonna start it, sort of look at those, see those trees in the- Yeah, I was thinking right edge of the bunker. Yeah, I'm gonna hit four just because it's in the morning. I hit a four about 221. Yeah. But I just feel about. like there was a little hurt in the last hole. The air's heavy. Yeah. Now this feels like a lot of club. My caddy just put some doubt in my head. I just head. asked you what you were hitting. What was it, 215? You are an anxious golfer. My caddy just totally screwed me up. 214, now it says, yeah, it's 214, 215. Okay, I'm gonna hit five. I actually like that better. Cool. Because then I can feel like I can hit it harder. And That's like what draw. I'm saying. Yeah. Lethal skanky. Go, go, go. This is a little hill there. Come on down. Is that gonna be short or is it's that gonna, gonna be go a little up? short? Oh, it's coming off the front. No, I'll take that. But yeah, the, I think about like my life and my career and the path that I took was so weird because I grew up in Vermont. Think about like guys like Doc and those guys that I met along the way that I was some, just think about what, how lucky I was to have people like that. Yeah. Because I was in a position where I needed to make money to continue to play. I didn't have, I didn't come from a, you know, a, I didn't have a, a family that had like tons of money to just fund this. Like this mm -hmm. was a job. Totally. Right away, right fun. away. Yeah. 
And yeah. I wasn't like, oh, I'll play a few years and yeah. if not, I'll. But I look back at that now as a as a, an advantage that I had. Hey, you had to fucking dig it out of the dirt. Yeah, because this like I didn't have an option to not make it. Gosh, I sometimes I can't believe it. Honestly, yeah. I there's been especially the last like year or two. It's the first time I've I've really sort of reflected. Well, you've had at this point you've had a career. Yeah. It's not just like oh I had had a couple years. Like you've been doing this for ten plus years and you're mm-hmm. still at the very highest level. Yeah, and there was like we were talking about earlier. There was a point where I didn't know if I was going to get back to this this level yeah like i wanted to play another Ryder cup but i doesn't matter how much i wanted to play i may not be able to do it right. you know yeah, it's not it's not it's not really like a want to do then you can do kind of thing no matter how many balls i hit or gym hours you know there was a period where i didn't know you yeah. know is that really on your mind a lot this year yeah are you lobbying already i'm not lobbying but i hope i'm lobbying with I play it's on my mind about every second of every day so would you rather make this Ryder Cup team or have someone wire you 10 million dollars I'd much rather play the Ryder Cup actually 10 million is you'd have to pop 50 up. 50 eh, we'd be we'd have a talk. we'd have a conversation yeah. okay so 50 is your number everyone's got a number yeah it's got to be coming in like by the shadow right it's almost going like yeah 90 I was kind of there's a sign back there I was kind of looking just inside that so that, that shadow is actually great okay A little low quite low see that i felt that in my feet here it, it didn't go right jeez that's terrible i normally make these though so we're good this is like a tap in today this is a tap in like it's it's going the whole way left to right at about a one told you i normally make those i mean i think i'm gonna have to go to like an aim point seminar you I should. never, I never seen anything like this. Before. You want me to get in there for a second? Okay. I'll show you. Okay. Put it, put this in your, in your left hand. You got to hold every, do everything the same. So aim, pull it in the middle. You don't want that. To, so go up here. You have to, you, wait, you have to do this. Like you have to hold the fucking. You don't have to, but if you, you do aim point, you should do, keep it in your same like, hand. Weight. Yeah. So you come, you come here, straddle the line, and then tell me where you feel the weight in your feet. I mean. You don't feel, come step to one more step. I've, you don't feel in the left a little bit. Okay, so that's that's not where it breaks. So don't in the right. In the right. There I you go. The, I, I was just I just said left because I thought that was going kind to of, was what the answer was going to be. It's a it, the puck goes this way. So you should feel a little bit of weight in your right foot. I'm a feel guy. Forget it. I'm a feel guy. <laughs> I'm a purist. <laughs> Par five, really, really long. I'm gonna go up the left center of this fairway. Of the fairway, not of, not over the rough? No. Does it open up on the left? Opens up a little. I think this is gonna be three shots, so even if it's in the rough, it's okay. But I'm going just, just up the left center. Okay. Oh my goodness! Get down. Good bounce. Oh, it came out. That's, Come on that's, over. That's the one that you need to win a tournament. I am absolutely slapping it around here right now. Doesn't matter though. Those three right ones are not my favorite. With the, with the putter, it doesn't matter. They're not my favorite, I gotta be honest. Let me see that gun real quick, because I have no clue. Yeah, this is probably not a spot you're in very often. No. Of course it's hard, dude. Really hard. You gonna make this grab? Yeah, I think so. I oh, gotta it, cut it a, a little dis- too. That was a disrespectful question. <laughs> well, you did grab it with two hands, which was... Well, well once you asked, I had pretty to... Pretty special. Should be good, right? Yep. I had that little tree in my way, so I couldn't yep, hit shot. it as far as I wanted. Dude, I still got a long way in here. It's like it's like not getting that much closer. No, I thought I was gonna get it close to that 150. This is gonna be like 200. 207 down 206. Are you kidding me? No. This All is right, fi- 207. Five iron. I'm gonna hit six because I gotta hit this hard off this lie. Okay. Yeah. I think if I get this, this is gonna go low 200, so I could have 20, 30 feet. It's. I mean, the back left pin. It's not horrible for your shot shape. No. Be the one. Come on, wind. Do something cool. Yeah, good shot. My my wife Jillian, she lets me be the best that I can be. Right. And like I can't tell you how much that helps as a player. And you're saying some other guys feel pressure on the home yeah, front? Yeah, I mean I a couple days ago I had to film this thing all morning. And it, they I filmed till like two o'clock and I've been gone all day and I hadn't practiced and 
I was like, Jill, I'm going to go to the course. I mean, it's a 30 minute drive up here, 30 back. So it's, mm -hmm. and I said, I'm going to go to the course. I, I but I really want to get back and, you know, hang with the family. And like, I felt terrible. And right before I was about to leave, she said, Keegan, don't feel like you got to rush back, do everything you need to do. And like just that little bit yeah. makes all the difference. Right. And she's probably looking at you in your eye and you know that like she yeah. means it. Like this life is so weird. And if you're not being able to put your work in or feeling guilty about it, you're not going to get better. Right. You know? Yeah, you can pull it. Pull you it? Can, you can pull it. Normally if I have to tend it, I just leave it. What are you looking at here? Read wise? It's going to go a little right early up in the middle and then come straighten out, maybe even come back a little left. Keep going, keep going. Wow, that was slow. Slow. I work on the putting green, I work on my reads now 90% than my stroke. And right, because the stroke is good, it's perfect, yeah. yeah. Huh. Most people's stroke is pretty good. If you're on, on the, the PGA tour, tour I yeah. would think so. <laughs> Ooh. Even that in this fun little day makes me want to scream. You can scream. Maybe I will. You can scream. All right, so that bunker on the right is looking like it wants a golf ball, but no, I don't know. It's if too far. Can't get there. So no. is that the line? The yeah. Edge of it? So it, it's actually a pretty big ferry. It kind of comes over here. So I like to aim sort of at the right edge of that bunker. Let's see if I can keep this one on the on the planet here. I like the planet. Yeah. Be all right. Right rough? Right rough. All right. How do you feel like your game is now compared to, you know, sort of other peaks in your career? Honestly, I feel like right now is the best I've ever played. Yeah. Like when I get into these positions where I have a chance to win, I ne I feel so much better. All of my wins really have come. How many you have? This, I, this was my sixth. Six. So most of my wins have come like I've made a charge on Sunday. This was, I played my best and I won. And like, I f feel like if I play my best, I have a chance to win. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Which is a which is a great feeling. Right. So it's, just, it's almost like it's on you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. You don't need anything like fluky to happen. No. And I was really un I was really nervous on that Sunday in the morning. Everybody that I came across, I could tell they were treating me different. Yeah. And it was like I was I was really nervous. As it was a heavy day. It was like a heavy. This is like my childhood dream to win this tournament. And my whole family's there. Support probably from oh, the no. crowd was also amazing. The I bet. Support and like I just like it was just intense. Fifty down, forty nine. It's actually not a horrible spot because you don't have to carry that water. It'll pitch forward a little bit. 49, you said? Yeah, you like just, just wedge right at I, it? I'm gonna hit a nine, because I just feel like it's gonna come out a little bit dead. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna aim just inside that, that little sign there. Cool, I love this one. Scored it a little. Turn in. Take All it. All right, not bad. Got another weird one here. Got some swing to it, right? I'm gonna make this. You hop right off the bat. Take that. Not bad. Do we put this out, these out in this show? As I don't normally put these on my week off. Well, this is not a week off. It's good. You made it. Q18, 217. Keegan said he's never hit a shot from this tee because this hole is ridiculous. I go, honestly, I go when I play here, I go all the way up and I hit like a seven iron. Yeah, 219 down, 216, cover is 191. There's a little help too. Yeah, I'm gonna hit five. Look at you. Two Down to 215? Yeah. Okay, so I'm looking at that. That tree in the distance? A tree in the right? distance and then if it turns over, it's got a chance to get back there. If not, I think it's gonna stay short because if you go to the right down there, you're in deep, deep uh, trouble. Goodness, dude. Go. I think that's going to be right in that little fairway. Okay. If this was a tournament day, like if I was playing a PJ Tour event, this is where we make our money in a day like today. Like I'm playing, like I'm not hitting it very good. Crying out a two under. Like let's, like the, the best players in the world shoot two under on a day like this, or you know, even if even could be a good round, or even shoot, you know, four. You know, so. Right. Just get hot on the back. Make yeah. Like these, are, these are the the best players in the world. These are the days where they separate themselves. Right, because everyone when they're playing good can shoot six under. For sure. No, I I pride myself on grinding out all the every round I play. You don't give up. How many how many times at the end of the year do you see this guy miss the tour championship? One shot, points? yeah. You know, and it's yeah. like two points is not even a shot in a tournament. Right. 
kind of tricky because it's so soft. So you want to get it yeah. running, but it's hard to get it up there. Yeah, so I got this going pretty good from right to left, but you're right. Like I I want to make sure that I get it up there, but I don't want to get it You don't want to go past it and have it roll down. Yeah, it's a tricky chip. This is 58. That's what, that's your... Yeah, that's my highest. Is, and, and it's mostly this around the greens, always? Pretty much everything. Lovely. Go, 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 go. Yeah, good shot. Thanks. Really nice. You have any superstitions? I always mark my ball heads up. If I move my coin, I put it on tails. So if I put it down and I and I forget, like I'll see the tails. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, remember when you were a kid and they said, tails never down. pick up a tails penny? I'll never leave a putting green without picking the ball out of the hole. Yeah. So like before, like I'll never just scoop my balls up. Even when I'm practicing out here, like I tap them in and pick them up. Really? So like you, if you miss a putt and they're like, we gotta go the first tee, you're still gonna like. No, make... I go and I, I have to, I putt with two balls. I have to put them down and tap them both in. Even for a casual round? Oh yeah. If I have a good match, I'm like so excited with yeah. my buddies. Like I still love doing You guys that. play for good money at the Grove? We'll play for, we'll have a good game. A couple grand? Yeah, but the, I always, people always want to know the number, but like we just want to beat each other. Yeah. You know, like the money is not. And how do you set up those games at the Grove? Was it just like, you can set up a group chat or you'll just yeah. text guys individually. Hey, I'm playing with JT and this or that. Yeah. yeah. And we'll get at the Grove. We can play with as many people as we want. So we'll even go out with seven or eight guys. You guys that. do that? Yeah. You've done it with like all pros? Yeah. So who like, who would be in that group? JT, Ricky, uh, Cantlay. I played with Rory. We, before the Masters, we had a big game at the Medalist. Um, That's so cool. It's great because you know, you're playing with real guys there, yeah. you know, and they're definitely real guys. They're those, real guys. Those are, the guys that you mentioned are all those are real guys. Real. Those are probably going to be the guys at the top of the league. Yeah, you know? yeah. Ugh! Darn it! Absolute torture. This fucking game. Torture. <laughs> torture. <laughs> All right, we gotta birdie the last. Okay. Gotta birdie the last. It's the hardest hole in the course. So gotta birdie be... the last. 320 to the bunker. So you can just aim right at it, right? Right at it. I think it's basically straight in. Right there, God, I hammered Sit. it. Sit down. it will be all right. Right next to the path, I think. Yeah. If you were to get to number one in the world, what would you have to improve? I think I would have to, like, Really, my career right now, I'm focusing almost all tons of time on my chipping and putting. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm always so impressed with like how Rom or Scotty Scheffler or those guys chip the ball. Like on a day like today, where you you're just trying to get through this round. If yeah. I was, like the chipping is just so important. Right. Because if you if I chip that ball in the last hole to a foot, right. You know, there's a. That's how you can keep these rounds together. Yeah, that's what Scotty does so well. So well. Yeah. Do you do any like conditioning work? Cause like I'm fucking tired. Like 2015-ish around there, I hired a full-time trainer and I did the whole weightlifting and I was, it's the worst golf I've ever played. Really? Ever, by far. So. <laughs> you just sucked. I play my best golf when I'm super lean. Mm -hmm. And so I, for me lifting weights, it just didn't equate to better golf. I'm right here. Jeez Louise, bar do we have? Do we even want the answer? <laughs> I mean, dude, I gotta have 230 here. 223. 223. Two, Down 221. The wind's helping though. It is helping. It shouldn't be, but it is. Thinking five iron? I'm thinking five iron, but I wanna make a three. Pins all the way back. But it's gotta jump. I'm gonna hit five. And just a little left of it? A little left of it. Yeah, that's gonna jump. You can feel it more when you put the club down? Yeah, I, I think it's gonna jump. I mean, I'm looking at that little window. The, the like little triangular one? Yeah. But I wouldn't take a drop here because I like this lie, and if I dropped, I'd be more. It's more of a side it's, it's hill. less flat. Yeah. Slipped a little. It's all right. It's looking like it's gonna be on the left side of the green. Yeah, good shot. Thanks. Gonna have to make a long one, but we're on the dance floor. Okay, baby. How do you feel like uh, the media, the big bad media, has treated you throughout your career? It's always so strange when you read negative media about yourself because like growing up, you're never in a situation where you see negative media. Like it's like your local paper is writing on you. What, what, what negative media they write about you? I mean, I almost got into a fist fight with a- Oh, I was gonna ask that. Yeah. If some, if some elderly Spaniard guy came up to me, not elderly, if some older Spaniard guy came up to me in my face, would you like get in his face? 
Would you protect me like that? I would protect you, man. I got you. I've learned to deal with it and I've learned to, I try not to look at it. I've had some times where some of the stuff has really affected me. Really? And like I, I've sort of given up on that sort of side of like looking at that social media because inevitably you're, someone's gonna try to put, make you feel dumb. Right. You know, come on Keegan. Come on, Keegan is right. This was, this was a pretty good shot. I'd take this. That was a really good shot. Do you regret that thing with Miguel? Yeah, I hate it. You were just I, too, you were just hot? Yeah, I just like, sometimes people underestimate me. You know, like, I'm really embarrassed by it. And like, every year during the match play, it pops up. Yeah. Like, and my buddies love it. So yeah. they'll like send it in our group chats and like, I can't, I delete it right away because I can't even. Can't even see it. Can't even see it because it's so embarrassing. Did you like Apollo, did you guys like hash it out? No. Never. I've never, I, I, don't know if I've ever seen him since, because he, he's a much older guy, yeah. and he plays the European Tour. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for him as a player. He's, what he's done is amazing, but like that day. That was Pepsi was on the bag? Yeah. Pepsi, for those who don't know, is a caddy who they call Pepsi because he doesn't drink water. He only drinks Pepsi. Doesn't drink anything but Pepsi. He won't drink Coke either, right? No. So if it's like, because that's tough because the tour is like, Coke's a huge sponsor. Does yeah. he travel with, like, does he get his own Pepsi? Yep. So he'll show up to the golf course with like. He like goes like in the practice rounds and stuff. He'll like put him in the woods. No way. Yeah. And he'll, and he'll take him, you know, just guzzle him down. Let's roll one in. Don't Go. stop. Go. Don't do that. Oh, Gosh, just missed just that little tracking. ridge. All right. We can knock that one in. Well, I'll take a par from. Where I hit it? Yeah. Hey. Hi, bro. That was a ton of fun. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing great. that. Uh, give me a grade as a caddy. You were okay. Okay. That's not a grade. <laughs> so where we're from, grades is like, you know, like A for B. I never was very good at school. Okay. I, I give you a, uh, give you a solid B. Too much, uh, like, sowing doubt in your mind? Yes. Yes. It should have been a little bit more positive. Didn't read one putt. You doing I your had to fucking get the divot calculus. On the, I had to get the divot on the one hole. There's a couple of things. We'll work on it. Okay. Sounds good. Well, that was episode two of Sidekick. Thanks for watching. That was a ton of fun.